Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. In this video, I'm going to present treasures. Um, how to give items to the player. So you have an, an items folder here. Maybe it's empty for now, but um, we will add uh, for this tutorial three examples of items. So in the description of the video you will find an archive uh, to download with these items. So actually each item is a Lua script. So I'm going to copy paste these in my project in the items folder here. Okay. So for this example we will make heart, shield and the sword. Ok, so they appear here, for now as regular Lua files. Um, yeah, but um, to register them in the quest as items, you need to do right click add to quest as item. Shield, sword. Okay. So you can look at their Lua code if you want, but um, this is not really the topic of this tutorial. We we will present treasures without um, any any special code. But um, just to to explain. Um, this script describes describes the properties of items. So, these properties for the sword, these properties for the shield, and these for the hearts. They are slightly more complicated, as you can see. Um, and the second thing we will need is actually for items that can be um, brandished by the player with the da 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 sound <laughs> of Zelda. So, and to do this we will need a dialogue for each item, more exactly for each variant of each item. So, um, you should create, we will uh, introduce the dialogue box in this episode, and if you don't have any language so far in your quest, you need one, you will need one. So we'll create English, EN and this is the dialogue editor uh, it's empty for now uh, in your main.lua file you need to uncomment this to activate the English language otherwise dialogues just won't work but uh, okay let's take still in this Archive, text, dialogues, and strings. Strings are empty by, uh, for now, but uh, okay, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So if I open this again, I should have some dialogues now. Um, if you already had a language and some dialogues. Of course, don't over override your files. But um, yeah, to make treasures that can be brandished, uh, dialogues are needed. So the dialogue is shown by the engine when, uh, for example, the player obtains the first variant of the sword. There must be a treasure, um, a dialogue, sorry, called exactly like this: underscore treasure dot the name of the item dot the number of the variant of the item okay um, so this is this is also the opportunity to discover the dialogue editor but uh, we will see dialogue editor in more details in another tutorial for now let's make a map 
to see some examples of treasures, how they can appear on maps. Uh, tile set light world, music overworld. Okay, let's put a destination. And as always, the game manager script should say to uh, that we want to start on the treasures map. Okay, you can already see if this works so far. Yeah, empty map. So, okay, uh, remember this toolbar, it can be used to create all types of dynamic entities. Uh, dynamic when uh, tiles are the static ones. So when you create a tile, it can never change dynamically at runtime later. But all of these are dynamic. So for example, let's see pickable treasures. So to create a pickable treasure, just click this icon, add, add pickable, and then you can edit it by double clicking or right click or return. And a pickable treasure is just uh, yeah, an item on the ground that can be picked by the player. So you have to choose the treasure here. For example, let's make a pickable heart. And then you choose the variant, so hearts only have one variant. And you can also save the the state of the treasure, whether it was found already or not. So OK. And I have my heart. And it can be picked. OK. I have just picked the heart. So as you can see, it's really something dynamic. It, it disappears at runtime when the player uh, works on the treasure. Um, so there is no visible <laughs> uh, heart meter yet, but actually I did win. I did gain some life because the that's what the heart script does here. It adds uh, when the player obtains uh, an instance of this treasure. Uh, we add to the game this amount of life. Four, because this is a hard script from Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX, and hearts um, can be div divided in four parts. So anyway, so yeah, a, a heart is uh, four life points. Okay, <coughs> so this is the first kind of treasure that can appear on a map, just a treasure on the ground that can be picked. And um, to have the the correct sp sprite here, the real sprite of heart from a link to the past, you need in sprites, uh, there must be a sprite called exactly entities slash items and it should contain all item sprites of your game okay and each item should exist as an animation in the sprite so there are, there are a lot of item sprites here because I uh, I just put all the ones of Zelda Mister of Solaris GX but um, since we have an item script called heart, we must have an animation heart in this sprite, in the entities slash items sprite. And it has one direction. Same for the sword and the shield, except that these ones have three, the shield has three variants. So there is one animation for 
sorry, there's one direction for each variant. And same for the sword with four variants. So when you do when you make an item, a new item, you need to have the dialogue underscore treasure dot name of the item dot the number of the variant. Uh, and the sprite. There must be a sprite. Uh, there must be a sprite animation with the same name as the item in the entities slash items sprite. Okay. The dialogue uh, is only used for items that are brandished. So this is not the case of hearts. But uh, we'll make another example now. We have seen pickable items, pickable treasures, the ones that are just on the ground. There are also treasure chests, of course. If you played Zelda, you, you should know this. So I created a chest, then uh, I want the, the Zelda chest sprite, it's here. And similarly to the pickable treasures, the treasure chest also have a, a treasure selector here. So let's try the sword, variant 1. And we don't save the treasure state in this example, but in a real game you probably would save the, the chest, the state of the chest. So whether the chest is already found or not. Note that this is different from the position, position state of the sword because you can have the sword number one, number two, number four, number three. <laughs> I don't know why I said number four before number three. Or no sword at all, which would be zero. Uh, so this is an integer, but in a real game you would probably have all four chests at some point and each chest also have its own uh, saved state open or closed, found or not found. So this is to save the state of the chest in the in a boolean variable. But uh, we don't use save games in in this tutorial yet. Uh, so okay, chest, sword, and we don't save it. <coughs> Let's try. So um, chest can only be can only be open from the south with the ac action key, which is spaced by default. And da 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 da! You found a sword of courage. Use it to vanquish your enemies. So if you want all of this to work, first the sprite, and secondly the the dialogue. Uh, as I was explaining, you need a sp uh, an animation with exactly the name of the of the item here and the direction directions corresponding to all variants of your item in the entities sp slash items sprite and for the dialogue it needs to be here underscore treasure dot the name of the item dot the number of the variant and don't forget in main dot lua to uh, set a language, otherwise you can't display any dialogue. Um, so we just saw a dialogue. Just so you know, um, it's possible to make um, a much better looking uh, dialogue box with a nice frame and everything, letters that appear gradually with sound and even asking questions in dialogue to the player. All of this is possible um, but with the dialogue box script, so it will be entirely customizable through scripts. But uh, for now we don't have any dialogue box script, so it's still okay. The, the engine mm, uses a very minimalistic dialogue box without any frame, without any letter animation. And it just uses the font 
uh, in this example the link to the past found because it's the only one in the project. So that's good enough for this tutorial but in a later, later tutorial we will make a nicer dialog box. Okay so um, pickable treasures, treasure chests, another example is um, sorry, destructible objects. So a destructible object is something that you can destroy, that a player can destroy, for example, a bush, or a vase, a skull, uh, in Zelda, what else do we have? Stones, and even grass. But uh, for this example, we'll make a bush. And the treasure, treasure will be shield in the second variant this time. We still don't save it, but play a sound when the bush is destroyed. There is the bush sound here. Um, wait, uh, you can do this for stones. Uh, it's to allow the player to lift the item only if the player has the lift ability um, greater than or equal to the, the number that you put here. Uh, we'll see this in more detail one day, don't worry. And it's a bush so we can we should be able to cut it with a sword and all, all of these are okay like this. Okay. Uh, by the way we you already have the chest sprite here and the bush uh, here. So that's why they, they already appear like in Zelda here. There are a lot of Zelda sprites. So you can uh, either lift the, the bush with the action key or use your sword with C by default. And there is the shield. You found the fire shield! You are now protecting from fire attacks. So notice that when you pick the shield, it is brandished with a dialogue. That's not the case of hearts. It's because uh, the, the heart script decided so. Because of this set brandished when picked false for hearts. Unlike uh, the shield. Okay, so here, here, here are three examples of treasures on a map, kind of treasures, pickable treasures, treasure chests, treasures um, in destructible objects. So actually it's when the map starts there is a destructible object and when you destroy the destructible object or when you lift it um, then a pickable treasure is created so same type of this, as this one um, okay we won't see other kinds of treasures in this episode but just so you know there are also enemies uh, you will see that they are very similar to destructible objects as far as treasures are concerned because you just you, you will be able to select the treasure dropped by the enemy if any and um, there are also shop treasures these are treasures that can be purchased for some money and it allows to make a shop very easily without any scrap, any Lua scripting. Um, but okay, that's enough for this episode. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question, feel free to ask. Um, and okay, see you next time, guys. Bye.